Fifty-eight years ago, when I was twelve, long about this time, at El Dorado Camp. El Dorado Camp is going on. It started Friday and it goes through this Friday. But our family vacation was, we had a, a cabin there. And so at that time we went for one week and it was called Institute, I believe. And then for the camp for, uh, it was like 10 days, mainly for the older people. And so we went to both of those things every year. And uh, if you have never been, it's, it's really warm there, <laughs> uh, normally. But it's really a very special place in that many, many lives have been changed uh, for the cause of Christ at that place. Uh, there was like classes in the morning at, at that time. There was hundreds that went there. I forgot how many the highest was I believe 13 or 1400 I think somebody said they had tents set up outside on, on the grounds and there was classes held and it was just it was big time and we always look forward to it the most fun part I believe for me was loading up the car and we had this uh, gas stove that some of the best salmon cakes uh, in the world was ever cooked on and uh, to warm up pork and beans and 
And, uh, but the part I liked best was going to the ice house. After we got there, <clears throat> we didn't have a refrigerator. We had an ice box. And we'd go downtown El Dorado and get a big block of ice and put that in the ice box. And as long as we kept the door closed most of the week, we'd have something at least semi-cold by, by Friday. But uh, growing up there, uh, listening to those services, I had class during the day and normally uh, in the afternoons was, was uh, rest time, rest time and then play ping pong and it was a, a very fun time. Uh, the evening services were really unusual I thought. We had our, our spot that we set and my spot was next to mom. I was the littlest, and I went uh, uh, down the, the seat there. But she always sat in the same place. And uh, so I don't think nobody ever did get our, our place. But <laughs> but anyway, it's those, those little bitty things like that that have an impact on your life that changes you forever. But those evening services... Uh, listening to several hundred sing those songs under this huge tabernacle and the fans would be blowing but I always thought those fans are not doing any good whatsoever but it's like they're blowing hot air down on us but uh, listening to those services and then when they would give the altar call all the people there would be a whole bunch of people lying the altar normally and praying and experience. I still have a lot of friends from there. I like to go down once in a while and see some of them. But the reason why uh, I felt like I ought to talk about camp today, uh, the most important part for me was, as I said, 58 years ago, uh, during the Thursday night service, uh, the Lord was sort of dealing with me, as they used to say. And so I thought we was going to make a break, me and my friend Frank. We was going to, quickly as we can, get out of the tabernacle and go over to the concession stand, one of the favorite places to hang out, and uh, then just sort of hang out and mess around till they told us it was lights out in the cabin. But uh, when we got to the big tree next to the cafeteria, I stopped and said, Frank, I got to go back. And he said, well, I think I'll just go back too. So we went back and uh, at that time, I did not understand exactly what all was happening. A very nice Methodist minister told me what I needed to do and explained a little bit about what it meant to get saved, they called it, and that's in the scripture, getting saved. But I had really no idea what all that, that meant at that time. I just knew that I needed to get right with the Lord and ask him to forgive me and invite him to come into my heart. I knew. <laughs> One thing I was dead sure of, I did not, I understood completely the concept of hell. And I knew that I did not want anything to do with hell. And... Uh, so whatever it took to avoid that, I was, I was in. <laughs> and then all of the other stuff comes later. Uh, that's just one of the good, good parts about it. So, and at that time, uh, I just thought, well, I went up to the altar and I, and I said what I was instructed to do and so on and so forth. But then as... When we got back to Marion, uh, I just felt clean, real clean on the inside, cleaner than I had ever, ever felt before. 
It's the only way that I know to describe it because that's, that is what I felt. And I knew that something had changed, something had happened in my life. And then to watch a lot of, of the friends and people who had come to camp down through the years. And uh, when a lot of them got saved and, and uh, it's just a, it's a very unusual experience for which I am very, very thankful that I had the opportunity to go all of those years. Uh, it's not nice to go to a lot of different places on, on vacation, but that was one place that was, uh, it was a vacation and a, a very important part of life and the life uh, ever after. So if you've never gone before, I invite you to, to check it out. It's, it's kind of warm because that, that same tabernacle is still there. I can't find our seat. They're done moving around to the seats and I don't know where, <laughs> where that one particular seat was that uh, I always sat right by the, the post, the, the pole, and then mom was right there. I, I can't find that spot. But uh, I know the general area where that's at. And uh, it's a special place. Uh, it's kind of warm. I m remember one time thinking, maybe the reason why it's so hot in here is maybe they're trying to, to help us get some kind of, of a picture of that other place that we don't want to go to or something because mosquitoes would be biting and flies flying on you. And I think, man, this is hot. This is hot. <laughs> but uh, that's when I was a, a lot younger, I thought that. Uh, one thing, the one verse that Reba said, read, 1 Peter 1, or I'm sorry, 1 Peter 2, 9, says, but you're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. I was given a, a handout here, and I'm just going to try to explain it. And it goes with what Reba read, and then that one particular verse talks about Christians being a peculiar people. We've heard about that, that circle and the dot on the inside. And uh, the big circle with the dot on the inside, uh, Perry Usi. It's just being or around to be being. But the most important part of that is this, and there's another verse, basically the same thing. It's Titus 2.14. Christians are the peculiar people of God. We use the word sometimes when we speak of something odd or strange. But that is not its use here. The word is translated from a Greek word which is made up of two words, one which means around as a circle, and the other which means to be. It can be charted by a dot within a circle. This will help us to understand the meaning of the combined word. As the circle is around the dot, so God is around each one of his saints. And I'll keep my, my finger right there. The point is, it talks about how Christian people, uh, and it compares them or us to the dot inside the circle. And on in this reading, it talks about how nothing... No outside force can get in and get that dot 
that is being encompassed by that circle. And so from those 58 years ago, uh, whenever I became one of those dots, the reigning God of this universe controls that, that sphere, that outer circle, and nothing is going to harm. It talks about how God is like a, a huge protector of the ones in that dot it says, this will help us to understand the meaning of the combined word. As the circle is around the dot, so God is around each one of his saints. The circle monopolizes the dot. Has the dot all to itself. It's talking about God having us all to himself. They are his own private, <clears throat> they are his own private, unique possession. So the way I understand that is, since we are God's own private possession, it does matter. It really matters a lot what I do, how I act my behavior. Scripture says, our lives are not our own, we are bought with a price. They are his own private, unique possession. He has reserved them for himself. The expression in 1 Thessalonians 1.1, 1, 1, the church of the Thessalonians in God has in it the same idea for the Greek case is locative of sphere. That is, it is in the sphere of God, circumscribed by God, surrounded by Him, under His protection and care. That is who we are. So, and on in the reading, we don't have time, it talked about how uh, draw the circle and draw the dot and then try to draw a line outside the sphere, the sphere to the dot. Well, you, you have to go through, you have to go through that, that circle before you get there. The implication is we are under God's care and protection. And this, according to 1 Peter 2.7, is a place of high privilege. High privilege. The Greek has it, unto you who believe in the, is the preciousness, that is, the preciousness of Jesus is imputed to us. He becomes our preciousness in the eyes of the Father as He becomes our righteousness before the law. Been reading this week uh, about the significance and the importance of the Old Testament and how we will be able to learn a lot more in the New Testament by reading the Old Testament, all of those stories, and how Yahweh and how Yahweh protects and provides and all of this other stuff, and it's talking about Yahweh the Father. But it's interesting to to read those stories and sort of connect those up to the ones in the Old Testament to the New Testament. 
remember hearing all my life about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel in the lion's den, and all, all of those stories. They're not just stories. It's Old Testament scripture. But how important the Old Testament scripture is in helping us to learn about the New Testament. But the really neat part about it is this. Whenever you, you take one of the Old Testament passages or stories and then one uh, similar in the, the New Testament and how they connect and it, it's like seeing something twice, a, a point that, that Scripture is trying to make. I'll just do this this way. I remember being taught at a place I used to work for a man who's here today in this place about flexibility and about being flexible and change and how all this, you just have to, you have to be flexible. <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit flexible here and just say, to go back and put in one last plug and then we'll sing about Beulah Camp. Uh, and say this, if you're not absolutely sure, positively sure, where you would go uh, after we leave this place, this earth, that would be a, a good place to go and just uh, sit in the heat and, and listen and sing and hear the Word of God spoken. And it is definitely, definitely life-changing. So keep that in mind. It goes through Friday night, I believe. So keep that in mind and... Before we sing, just remember the, the dot and the circle. One more little thing about that dot and the circle. The reason why that big circle is around that dot is because of love. Because of love. God the Father, Yahweh, sent His Son, Jesus, because He loves you and me. And He wants us to have a relationship with Him. He wants us to walk with Him and talk with Him each day because He loves us very, very much. Enough to go to the cross in our place and to take on all the sin from all of us that day on the cross because he loved us. And that is what, and this is about today. It's about that one little song that we sing. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. That's what it's about. And why we do what we do. Let's stand and sing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>